Right now, we can only use these classes on the input field itself. I'd like to take this a step further and use a little bit more of the bootstrap classes that allow us to show validation for these forms. If we take a trip over to the bootstrap docs, you can see that by adding a class has success to this entire input field, this form group, we can see that the label gets colored green, the input box gets a border of green, and the help block right below it gets a color of green as well. It would be nice if we could do the same thing for error and also show a message like name is required and have that turn red as well. Let's go take a look at our form and see what the shortcomings are. Right now we can only use the validation classes on this input itself. It would be nice if we could add the has error class right here and show and hide a help block based on if this name is required and valid. In order to do that, we're going to do a little bit something extra with this template variable. We're going to bind the template variable to ng model. Now, this template variable will have access to all of these great validation states that we have on this input field directly. So a cool thing we can do is we can property bind ng class and we're going to say, I want to add the has error class if the name is invalid and that name field has been touched. Oh, and let's close that object there. Great. Now, this local template variable name will give us the access to invalid and touched. Instead of using class name here, let's say valid and we'll do name the valid and then let's do the same for touched great now we should be able to see that in our new form valid is true touched is false as soon as we click and click away touched is true and if we go and delete that we can see that the has error class is applied to that field so that this input has that red border around it We'll go ahead and keep this red border on the left and we'll add on the required message that goes below this input field. Let's do span class and this is the help block and that's the bootstrap class that's used for the input messages. And let's do ng if we'll do name.invalid and name.touched. And the message's name is required. Now just by binding ng-model to this local template variable, we have access to seeing the class here and access to showing and hiding the help block below it. Let's give that a try. We'll delete all that. And now we can see name is required and it's red just like we expected. The one thing that I'm seeing is missing is this name doesn't get that red label. We have to go check for a bootstrap class that we're missing. And it looks like the label has a class of control label. So we'll go ahead and copy that, bring that over to our app. All right. Let's double check to make sure that works as well. Delete that. And now our label, our input, and our help block are all red, just like we expected. And if we start typing away, everything is good to go. We also need to add the has success class. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll do a comma here, has success if name is valid and name has been touched. So by separating with a comma, we can apply different classes based on different evaluations. Now our label is green, our input field is green, and there's no message since we don't need one. Let's go ahead and do the same for our username. We'll delete this. And to start back over with our clean username input, we need to bind ng-model to that template variable. Then we have access to it. And we'll go ahead and copy the ng-class from up here. And the help block from down here. We're not looking at name, we're looking at the username template variable. Now we're able to show and hide the 
help block for the username is required, and also add and remove those classes. Delete everything there, delete everything there, and you can see that we are now able to provide much better information to our user that things are required. As we move through this application, you can start to see a couple of the disadvantages of having template-driven forms. There is a lot of boilerplate code in these input fields and on our div and our template for showing and hiding various things around our application. The model-driven way cleans this up a little bit and makes it so it's a little bit more readable. Next up, we'll work on a little more validity on the input fields, and then we'll move on to checking validation on this overall form.